check this out. <laughs> so this is a video I'm going to go through. Um, <clears throat> wow, I'm wearing like a camouflage shirt with this thing. Anyway, uh, for the 1983 Guild Pilot SB604 SB. So double SBs. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty cool. This is really something. Um, SB604, they used that, uh, all the regular guilds with the foot headstock and, and a lot of the other ones with the cake cutters were 602s. Uh, the, the 604 was the hockey stick headstock. This is of the era of the uh, pointy guitars. Yep, the 80s. 1983. And um, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's a great bass. I'm going to go through a little bit more about that. Um, so SB solid base 604, meaning that it had the angle headstock as opposed to the 602. And SB is the Finnish code, which means sky blue, which, believe it or not, this was sky blue. You can tell when you uh, remove the neck or the pickups or lift the, um, the bridge off. Uh, you can see the actual sky blue color underneath. Um, <clears throat> the clear coat that's on top of this yellowed, like all most clear coats of the day did. And uh, so it made it kind of this, I don't know, it's it's almost like a teal kind of color. I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe. Sometimes the light catches it and it looks really sky blue, still uh, natural light. When it's under lights like this, it looks a little bit more like that tealish kind of color. But regardless, it is a factory finish and um, Given that it was early and rare and clear coated like that, I, I think it might even be lacquer. Shocker. Um, super lightweight. Uh, this thing clocks in at under eight pounds, 126 ounces to be exact, and that is uh, pretty, pretty phenomenal. It's so light and it's really well balanced. You know, you look at it and you might think, oh, that big headstock. Nah, this thing's, you know, really well balanced. Um, and, and light on the strap because it's under eight pounds. So I'll just go over a few things. I mean, you probably know a little bit of the history of the pilots. If you don't, I mean, it was, this was, in my opinion, these bases being U.S. made. Uh, and when they first came out, I had a Gill B301, which was a previous uh, electric base they built in the 70s, kind of a four uh Four string, two on a side headstock, uh, in the classic guild headstock, um, and it was a good bass, but it wasn't, you know, anything particularly that, that special. It certainly wasn't out fendering any of the fenders. This bass, though, did something at the time, 1983, when they came out with it, that wasn't available from Fender, which was the combination of the P PJ pickups, right? You got the jazz bass pickup in the classic position. You got the P bass pickup in the classic position, uh, and it they were EMGs, so they're totally quiet. Um, if I can do this without making it ring, yeah, and the volume's up, you know. So um, really quiet and uh, active pickups with a passive tone control. So it's just volume, volume, tone. Uh, they sounded great, and and uh, they played the necks on all of these bases. Typically of that era are phenomenal. This one's no exception. <clears throat> and like I said, it's it's a PJ from the factory, and it was lighter weight. It is more extreme offset contour than the jazz bass even, and uh, it, so it balances incredibly well. And uh, there were a lot of people playing these back in the day. I worked at a place that sold them when they first came out, and uh, I fell in love with them. Typically, at that point, they had like a, a cosmic blue and a candy apple red and black and, you know, pretty basic colors. But, as Guild was wont to do, you could order almost anything, which is why you see some with these crazy finishes. Um, I've seen, like art finishes with like weird overspray colors and swirls and tiger stripes and you know whatever you wanted <clears throat> you just had to pay extra for it uh matter of fact when i was working at the place a guy ordered one in green uh like the sort of 
Fender Sherwood Green Metallic with a matching headstock paint and a unlined fretless maple fingerboard. I mean, <laughs> thing was crazy. It's beautiful. Um, so they would do pr pretty much anything. So somebody uh, in 1983 ordered this as a uh, sky blue 604 headstock uh, base, and it's great. Um, really nice thick I don't know if you can see that but nice thick rosewood board and these the rosewood of these fingerboards at that time was still uh, Brazilian um, it has uh, and the neck itself is incredibly clean um, really really nice grain smooth smooth finish there's no like real major wear on this base even particularly um, and oops, I just unplugged it accidentally. Um, there is a, uh, a little finger wear here and a little chip here uh, in the paint, and that's it. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the, it's a jazz bass, basically, uh, styled instrument. So it's a one and a half inch uh, nut width, which is really nice. Um, the angle of the, the, Strings looks pretty extreme, but that roller uh, string keeper does a great job actually in keeping it keeping it together and uh, keeping it keeping it solid and in tune. Uh, the bridge this is a Mueller bridge, which uh, they kind of interchangeably would sometimes have the shaller uh, bridge with the rollers. This has rollers as well. I like this better. Um, it's a little lower mass than the shower, uh, and by that I just mean it's a little, it's not quite as heavy. Um, <clears throat> it's got plenty of mass, don't get me wrong, but it's not the massive shower roller bridge of the, of the era, which is why it clocks in at, you know, under eight pounds, which again is, is phenomenal. Uh, I'm just going to go through some basic tones, um, just so you, you know, you can kind of get an idea. The strings on this are, are kind of old. I will say that um, I was going to put a new set of strings on, but since I knew I was going to sell it, uh, you know, I just left the Rota sounds that were on it. And because if I put my classic uh, go to DR uh, nickel 45 105 set, someone else might not want that. I don't know. They might want you know, Rota sounds or elixirs or, you know, whatever. So. Uh, I just left the strings that are on it. They play fine. <clears throat> uh, and the new owner can put whatever they'd like on this bass. Uh, so let's go through, again, two EMG pickups. Uh, you'll notice that the uh, the precision bass pickup is reversed, in, in that meaning that the, the EA bar, instead of being forward, is behind. And the idea for that is to get it closer to the bridge. So the E and A string you'd want to have a little closer to the bridge to tighten them up a little bit and the D and G string you'd want to have closer to the neck to get fatten them up a little bit. I think it's a great idea and you see it it's super common on a lot of bases uh, after this but they were one of the first uh, companies that did it and again you know you couldn't get a PJ from Fender at that point so there were a lot of reasons these things were popular with like Daryl Jones, Gary Talent, Jerry Peake. I mean, there are a lot of people using them. This is just both pickups uh, all the way up, tone all the way up. And inherently, I found from the first time I ever played one of these, it had a really great just general tone. I mean, and especially for playing funk stuff and I'm not gonna play that well because I can't anymore but it sounds great is all I'm trying to say uh, so <clears throat> obviously with the uh, P pickup off and the jazz pickup soloed um, maybe cut the treble a little bit and it gets that kind of mm. 
It's got a nice finger style pop kind of funk sound to it. Um, the neck is in great shape. Perfect, uh, actually. The frets are in great shape. Uh, there's no high, no high frets, uh, no dead spots. Just really, really great playing. Uh, the P pickup soloed, jazz pickup off, um, and the treble, I should say, the tone control all the way up. Um, really nice. Just a really good, solid, old school rock tone. And if you palm mute, that sounds great in the room. I don't know how it's going to sound out there, but. Really cool with the palm mute. Comfortable bridge to palm mute on too because a lot of the parts are rounded so it's got a nice feel to it. Uh, and with both pickups up and the tone rolled off. A really nice finger style sound. It's got kind of a vintage tone with it set like that, I think. Um, yeah, that's that sounds great. It looks a little weird when you're playing it with a hockey stick. I should be I should just be slamming out some kind of play that kind of stuff anyway so um yeah really great bass anyway um super nice hard shell case which you can see right above my thumb in the background here uh all original um actually has the uh warranty card and the key you know so for almost 40 years, 37 years later, if this thing's a complete. And uh, I love Pilots. Uh, I think this one's really exceptional and it's such a lightweight instrument too. I, I just, uh, I think it's great and it's super resonant. I might end up, I might end up putting new strings on it just so I can hear how it rings because I'm sure it's just stupid sounding when it's got new strings on it. But anyway, uh, I, got, I rambled a little bit more than I wanted to, but I was kind of joying out on this. So anyway, this is the uh, 1983 Guild SB604SB pilot. That's a mouthful. Sky blue, kind of teal nowadays, but uh, originally sky blue. And uh, for sale, you could own it. It's a great one and super lightweight, sounds great, uh, plays great make you a great bass for a long, long time, maybe the rest of your life. So thanks for checking it out.